So notice that if the underlying set X has a least element, which we'll call A sub naught, then the entire set X can be represented as the half open ray from and including A sub naught to positive infinity. Similarly, if the underlying set X has a greatest element, which we'll call B sub naught, then the entire set can be represented as the half open ray from negative infinity to B sub naught inclusive of B sub naught. So if the underlying set has both a least element a sub naught and a greatest element b sub naught then the entire set can be represented as the closed interval from a sub naught to B sub naught. Now this brings up an important point about uh, interval notation. In each of these cases the intervals and the rays are considered as subsets of the underlying space X. Now the use of interval, interval notation uh, can be misleading and so we have to be careful with its use. So for example, if the entire set X is represented by the half open interval from A sub naught to infinity, rather the a half open ray from A sub naught to uh, positive infinity, this does not necessarily mean that the set X contains all elements greater than or equal to the element a sub naught. Rather, the interval, or rather the open half open ray from a sub naught to positive infinity is the set of all elements x in the underlying set x such that that element x is greater than or equal to a sub naught. So let's look at an example to make this clear. Let the set x be the union of the open interval, half open interval from A sub naught to B with the open ray from B to positive infinity as a subset of the space X, the half open ray from negative, uh, rather from A sub naught to positive infinity is this union So now suppose that the set X is a subset of the set of reals as a subset of the reals, the half open ray from A sub naught to positive infinity is not equal to the set X since the point B is in the half open ray from A sub naught to positive infinity and the point B is not in the set X since it is the union of the half open interval from A sub naught to B with the open ray from B to uh, 
infinity, positive infinity, and does not include the element b. And so we adopt the general convention, unless otherwise stated, all intervals and rays are considered as subsets of the space X. Okay? So notice, if the underlying set X has neither a least element, nor a greatest element, then the half-open intervals are neither open nor closed so as an example suppose that the underlying set X has neither a least element nor a greatest element. Then we'll look at the subsets, the open interval from A to B, the half open interval from A to B inclusive of A, the half open interval from A to B inclusive of B, and the closed interval from A to B. We'll look at the interior, the closure, and the boundary of these subsets. As the open interval from A to B is open, it is its own interior. The smallest closed set containing the open interval from A to B is the closed interval from A to B. And the boundary is the closure set minus the interior, and so is the uh, set containing the elements A and B. The half open interval from A to B inclusive of A is neither open nor closed. The smallest, uh, cor correction, the uh, largest open set contained in this interval is the open interval from A to B. The smallest closed set containing it is the closed interval from A to B. And again the boundary is the set containing the elements A and B. The uh, half open interval from A to B inclusive of B once again is neither open nor closed. The largest open set contained in it is the open interval from A to B. And the smallest closed set containing it is the closed interval from A to B. And once again the boundary is the set of the elements uh, containing the elements A and B. The closed interval from A to B is closed and so it is its own closure. The largest open set contained in it is the open interval from A to B. And once again, the boundary is the set containing the elements A and B. So now we look at the subsets of the SpaceX, which are the open ray from negative infinity to A, the half open ray from negative infinity to A inclusive of A, the open ray from A to positive infinity, and the half open ray from A to positive, in positive infinity inclusive of A. And once again we look at the interior, the closure, and the boundary of these subsets. The open ray from negative infinity to A is open and so it is its own interior. The uh, 
Smallest closed set containing it is the half open ray from negative infinity to A inclusive of A. And so the boundary is the singleton containing the element A. The half open ray from negative infinity to A is closed, and so it is its own closure. The largest open set contained in it is the open ray from negative infinity to A. And so once again, the, sing uh, the boundary is the singleton containing the element A. The open ray from A to positive infinity is open, and so it is its own interior. The smallest closed set containing it is the half open ray from A to positive infinity inclusive of A. And so the boundary is once again the singleton containing the element A. And finally, for the half open ray from A to positive infinity, it is closed, and so it is its own closure. The largest open set contained in this interval, uh, rather this ray, is the open ray from A to positive infinity. And once again, the boundary is the singleton containing the element A. Okay, so next we will show that every singleton set is closed. in the order topology on the set X. It's a proof. Let the element A be an element in the uh, underlying set X. Then the singleton containing the uh, element A is the intersection of the half open ray from negative infinity to A inclusive of A with the half open ray from A to positive infinity which is closed as it is an intersection of closed sets and hence every singleton set is closed. In the order topology. Okay. So since every singleton set is closed, in the order topology, on the underlying set X, the space X is T1 or Frechet. Further, every finite point set is closed as it is a finite union. of closed singleton sets. So next we will show that the space X with the order topology is T2 or Hausdorff So proof. Notice that at least one pair 
of distinct elements. exist in the underlying set X since the cardinality of the set X is greater than or equal to 2. So let A and B be two distinct elements in the underlying set X. There are two cases Suppose that there exists an element C in the underlying set X such that C is greater than A and less than B. Then the element A is in the open ray from negative infinity to C. And the element B is in the open ray from C to positive infinity where the intersection of the open ray from negative infinity to C with the open ray from C to positive infinity is empty. Otherwise, the element A is in the open ray from negative infinity to B and the element B is in the open ray from A to positive infinity where the intersection of these two rays is the open interval from A to B which is empty as there are no elements between A and B. So in either case for every pair of distinct elements A and B in the underlying set X there exist disjoint open neighborhoods of the distinct elements A and B. And therefore the underlying, or rather the space X, is T2 or Hausdorff. So we have seen that the order topology on the set of integers is the same as the discrete topology on the set of integers. And so for the set of integers, the uh, order topology is completely disconnected, or rather the space is completely disconnected. Every point is an isolated point, and there are no uh, dense subsets, so it is not separable. Uh, as we will see, this is true in general. For any countable set, X. And many of the properties of the order topology depend upon the cardinality of the underlying set in the space or of the space. So we will end here for today. Next time we will uh, develop the tools necessary to determine whether or not a given set is countable. So I hope you have enjoyed the 10th lecture. Thanks for watching.